Hello, and welcome to another edition of the STM32 technical video series. Today we will be discussing turning your ST-Link V2 debugger into a lean, mean debugging machine. As you probably know, the ST-Link V2 is a very versatile debugger as well as programmer for the 32-bit STM32 family as well as the 8-bit STM8 family. And it's compatible with a wide range of tool chains including IAR, Kyle, Italic, and others. It's very low cost, less than $30 through distribution, readily available. Once you have your ST-Link V2, the first thing to do is go to ST.com, search for ST-Link, and get to the ST-Link V2 landing page. Here you can see a description, key features, and a photo of the debugger. If we click on Design Support, we can find the user manuals for the ST-Link, as well as the ST-Link Utility, which is a useful tool for programming. Also, the USB driver as well as the ST-Link Windows executable here. And here's our souped up ST-Link V2 debugger. You can see we've added a red and green LED, a small wire coming out, as well as a reset button. The wire coming out is attached to the USB VBUS line, providing 5 volts to our target. Of course, our target will need a regulator to bring that within the operating range of the STM32. But provided you keep the operating current within a couple of hundred milliamps, you can get rid of an external power supply or a second USB cable. To get started, we're going to need to crack our ST-Link open. Here you can see the two Phillips screw locations on the back of the debugger. Take an X-Acto knife and cut away a bit of the label to expose the screws. Also realize that your ST-Link warranty has now been voided. To get started, we'll connect our 5 volt power wire. You can connect it to C10 and C12 as shown here. And then make a small cut in the top plastic piece with your X-Acto knife and run the wire out. Also you can see here I've milled out three holes for our LEDs and reset switch. I've connected the cathodes of the LEDs as well as one side of the reset switch together. These will go to ground. I've also broken out my hot melt glue gun and glued those in place. Here you can see the top wire is our ground connection to the cathodes of our LEDs and one side of the reset switch. And then there are two resistors connected to pin 3 and 5 on the JTAG connector. Also a wire going to the other side of the reset switch to pin 15. I'm using 470 ohm current limit resistors for our LEDs here. These JTAG signals are the TDI and T reset signals, which in serial wire mode are not needed for connection. These correspond to PB4 and PA15. As long as these signals are connected to your target, you can use them any way you'd like, perhaps a system heartbeat or measuring the timing of an interrupt handler. We'll neatly pack our wires back in, screw it back together, and there you have it. Two sweet LEDs, some target power, and who doesn't like a reset switch for the target? You will be the envy of your engineering lab. Of course, feel free to add your own customizations. Paint it a sparkly gold. Give it a pinstripe. Start an ST-Link V2 Facebook group. The possibilities are endless. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you again.